You've written your memoir, or perhaps you are still writing. The art and craft of writing a memoir are foremost in the creation stage. But there's going to come another stage that's going to come later, that is marketing. And in this video, I want to share a process of reaching as large an audience as possible for the book you have worked on so hard. It's not too early to be thinking of marketing at whatever stage you're at right now. I will mentor you on this very subject by sharing my process from my most recent memoir, French Boy, A 1950s Franco-American Childhood. Since this is an independently published book, it is my responsibility to identify and then reach out to my potential audience. This is the audience that in some way can be said to have been waiting for my memoir, or waiting for your memoir, you might say. Now, where is my audience and where is yours, of course, to be found? What do they read? Where do they post? Where do they congregate? But before we go on, let me welcome you to the Memoir Network's Better Memoir Writing Masterclasses. For those of you who do not know me, I am Denis Ledoux. I'm a writer, I'm a teacher, and I'm founder of the Memoir Network. I'm so pleased that you have joined me today. This masterclass is brought to you by the Memoir Network's Coaching Services. A writing coach offers you just-in-time solutions, be it providing technical guidance, teaching specific writing skills, prompting you to action, or counseling you through writing blocks. Schedule a complimentary Get Acquainted consultation by going to the e-address listed in the description of this video. And I'll also have a bonus for you at the end. Now, let's begin this masterclass. In this video, I delineate my various audiences for French Boy. My process also will apply to your memoir. Implement as it pertains to your book and its audience. I estimated that my largest and most interested audience, the most likely to buy, would be other Franco-Americans, French-speaking Canadian-Americans, born between 1940 and 1960. Why are they my prime audience? Well, these are the men and the women who have lived an experience analogous to mine, and they may be quite interested in seeing their own childhoods replicated in my story. My story, in many ways, is their story. My task, therefore, has been to find this audience. Luckily, I have many venues to approach. There are blogs, there are po podcasts, and there are associations to tap into. Who is your primary audience? Who are the people who share your experience? Who has been waiting for your memoir? Who has been saying, when will this memoir be available for me to read? And where do these people congregate? Where can you find them? But of course, I really don't want to limit myself to just this one group, my peers, which I consider, of course, to be my primary audience. Neither should you. I know that there will be many younger Francos for whom the story of Franco-America is an interesting and attractive one. They will want to read about the experience of their parents, their grandparents. I must keep these people who are Franco-Americans, but not of my generation, in front of mind. Who else might be on the sideline of the primary audience for your memoir? These are also primary readers, but they form a subcategory. For instance, a memoir about your sports achievements as a senior athlete might interest middle-aged athletes who are just behind you and know that your stage is their next stage. In addition, I think there are many people who are actually not Franco-American, but who have Franco-Americans in their families, uh, in their place of employment, among their circle of friends, or who may live in a New England community with a large Franco-American population. I would include in this group people from away, as we say here in Maine, who find themselves rubbing elbows with many people who identify as Franco-Americans. Now, who is your ancillary audience? Which interested audience 
must you include as they could contain many buyers. A food memoir may, for example, interest travelers who are wondering what kinds of food they may encounter in some foreign country. My memoir, French Boy, is entirely set in Maine, so I really mustn't overlook Maine history buffs who may want to go beyond the usual Anglo history and examine a more diverse Maine than they have been used to. I'm setting up speaking engagements in towns without a significant Franco population in addition to the cities with significant Franco numbers, just so I can reach these main buffs. Does your book have a geographical audience? Can your memoir fit into a category that might seem tangential right now, but isn't? For instance, you have written about your Down syndrome child. Might you reach out to a parent with an exceptional child of some other sort? In addition, I know that there are a lot of Francophiles, that is, lovers of the French language, who are curious about the existence of a Francophone population right here in Maine and right here in New England. These people probably studied French in high school or college or have traveled to French-speaking countries and finding, them, and finding themselves in an area with a strong French history. They now want to learn more about the area's historically French-speaking population. Does your book have an audience that you could describe as a curious one, even if they are not viscerally interested as a readership of your content? A money investment memoir might interest people interested in saving. You have to try to think a little bit outside the box to, to, to delineate who might be interested in your book. There are also Franco Studies programs across New England. Generally, these are minors programs that offer a reading list for their students, either for the students extra reading or as part of a class assignment. They also invite speakers to come to address students. Visiting classrooms is something that I have always enjoyed and there is a stipend associated with this activity. Well, universities are generally not indigent and they can pay you. Now, does your own book have an institutional marketing possibility? Can you find a venue to speak to about your topic? It may not be at a university, but there are clubs, there are societies, there are companies that focus on your topic. I'm sure there is. Find them. A corollary to the Franco Studies programs are the Maine and the New England Studies programs. My text about a Franco-Americans who contributed enormously to this region is completely appropriate. And since they too, these programs, will order books, they are not to be overlooked. Again, what are your institutional supports, your next-in-line institutions? If you can sell classroom sets of books, you will do very well. I also mustn't forget New England libraries and historical societies. At the very least, they may be worth the sale of a book or two, and at best, they would have a stipend for you to speak to their memberships. I have spoken to annual meetings of various groups and have been able to collect stipends and bring books for sale. Oh, and don't forget libraries and professional groups you can market to. Of course, there are many people interested in simply good writing, and I must not forget to appeal to them. These people can be approached via reviews, newspapers, blog tours, and so forth. Whenever you do anything online that will stay online, be sure to use a title that is searchable by a search engine. Stuff your title with keywords. For this title, forget the poetic in favor of the prosaic that has keywords embedded in it. So be sure that you pitch your book as good writing. And lastly, I would include anyone who is interested in process and implications of ethnic acculturation and assimilation or bilingualism in language acquisition. Therefore, I would look to university programs, professional associations, blogs that are interested in this topic of acculturation, assimilation, and bilingualism. What is the broad appeal your book may have that is associated with its theme? 
A memoir on house building might even appeal to a group interested in food if the book has a section on maximizing the cooking and dining rooms of the home. I have offered you a number of foci. I have just led you through a number of these that I am going to pursue myself in my marketing. I'm not going to do it all in the next month. I don't have the money or the energy to do a huge blast of a lunch. Instead, I will do what is called a soft lunch and proceed down my list of these potential audiences starting with the beginning the Franco-American born between 1940 and 1960. And then I will go on to number two, Franco-Americans generally interested in their group's history. Then number three, non-Francos interested in Franco-American history. Now this is how I will prioritize my marketing. You yourself, you must create your own list and proceed to market to each group from the most likely to buy to the least likely to buy. While it is true that the first year sales will be your biggest, it is also true that books continue to sell years after they have been published. My mother's book, We Were Not Spoiled, published in 2014, continues to make sales every month. While these are no longer in huge numbers, for a small publisher who has a number of books out, this trickle over many books can begin to add up, if not to a living itself, at least to a side. If you would like to explore receiving help with your memoir on any aspect of memoir writing or publishing, know that we offer a 30-minute complimentary Get to Know You coaching consultation. The link to a free consultation is in the description below. And before you go, please hit the subscribe button at the bottom left of this video and click on the bell next to it. Subscribing assures this memoir writing content will appear on your YouTube homepage and recommendations bar. Check the description below for a link to this week's free video e-course. And remember, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Yard by yard, it's hard. Good luck writing. The videos that we post on the Better Memoir Writing Masterclass channel are just one of the many ways we can help people write better memoir. I'd like to take just a few moments to share more of what the Memoir Network can offer you by way of partnering with you to write and publish your memoir. Our free membership program, My Memoir Education, offers you access to e-courses, e-books, videos, and more. We have had thousands of people benefit from the free My Memoir Education to write their memoirs, and we hope you will become a member too. Our blog contains over 500 in-depth posts on different aspects of memoir writing, and it too is free. Come on over and uh, pick and choose what you need. While free content can be very helpful, there comes a time when you need more focus and more mentoring than you can get from free. We offer coaching, editing, whether copy editing, content editing, or developmental editing, ghostwriting, and book production. Our website features many of our clients' book covers and testimonials. Come and check us out. We also have a number of programs you can purchase. The Memorable Story is a 10-module home study program on every aspect of memoir writing. It provides university-level mentoring. The Inspired Memoir Writer is a group coaching program. You meet with fellow writers over a period of 10 sessions. We also offer Jumpstart Memoir Professional Packages which are designed for people who would like to help others write their memoir. If you're interested in knowing more, please feel free to call us or email us at info at Thanks, and uh, keep writing.